And last year there was 104 hold-ins in my backyard. I became obsessed with these General Motors Australian cars and I mean, you see the summer gnats over there. I mean, it's just, the cars are incredible. Australian General Motors cars, they all, uh, Holden ceased to exist in 2017, but NASCAR had their entry as a Chevy SS for a few years. They would, of course, had the Monte Carlos and the Luminas and all these other cars that they graduated from Impala SSs that looked nothing like the cars, but uh, they had a Chevy SS was, was their car. And so uh, they had to put them on the showroom floor. And they did little to no advertising that this four-door, 6.2-liter sedan was available at every Chevy dealership that you could ever go to. And it, was, it started life as a VF Holden Commodore. And they would bring them over with little modification, like very little modification, and turn them into a Chevrolet SS. And it had a very horrible well, my opinion, gold Chevy badge on it. looked like a belonged on a pickup truck on this sedan. You can get them with four options. Your color, sunroof, spare, transmission. So you can get a manual, six-speed, 6.2-liter, American-made General Motors sedan, and they never, ever advertise the thing. So they become pretty rare and, and very interesting. But if you know the right people, you can get all the Holden conversion parts because if you open up the door, it still says that that car is is manufactured in Australia. And people are like, is that a replica? Is that a rebadge car? It was still made in Australia, so they actually put Chevy badges on Australian car, and all you're doing is rebadging it back to the Holden conversion. They said, is that a conversion? It's not a conversion. It started life as a Holden anyhow. They put these horrible badges on them with the Chevy stuff. But then you can go through the car from the trim to the door handles to everything that was available in Australia, you can get for a left-hand drive car. And uh, my wife ordered one in 2017, a VF Commodore, which is a Chevy SS. The car is amazing because she has a G8, which is basically the same car, but all the creature comforts aren't there anymore. The G8 has no navigation, has no Bluetooth. It's the last rogue, big rear-wheel drive V8, you know, monster car. And then they came out with another one, but then they put Bluetooth and navigation and, and all these creature comforts where they refined the car into the VF Commodore. And so I fell in love with hers and I went on a look for this, uh, for one for myself, or went on a, a hunt and uh, found one that was one of 78. It's uh, jungle green and fell in love with the car. And so I also converted it to exactly as it appears in Australia when it would have came down the line there. And it is another thing that everybody thinks it's a Peugeot, or they think like, what on God's green earth is that car? But if they would have marketed it, they would have sold more of them, but they never did. Yet they drove it in NASCAR, and I have no idea uh, why that car met a terrible death here in the United States. They look good either way, but uh, the Holden badges and the Holden conversion, because you can buy the airbag, you can buy everything that makes it a left-hand drive, Commodore without spending the expense of exporting one from Australia. Arnie's a big fan of the Caprice, PPV Caprice, but they are longer for the prisoner in the back of the car. So the back two doors, they're like the fat uncle to the G8. They're now the fat uncle to the SS, but the Chevy Caprice has basically the same wheelbase as a Holden Ute. It's about four inches longer than the SS. It is an amazing car. Uh, a lot of, of course, the police departments are now selling them off and auctioning them off, and you can pick them up relatively cheap. And if they don't have the hole in the in the, for the spotlight, you can get a lot of the detectives' cars and whatever else, and they are incredible sedans. Uh, very unloved because the Ford Pursuit vehicle and whatever else came over, and, and of course, uh, the charges are everywhere. The Caprice is a statesman in Australia, and they also still call them a Caprice over there. And a PPV is another name for them but they are basically the same car. The 14 and up basically has the same dashboard as the SS. Uh, lower has the G8 dashboard in it. And uh, you always wanna go for the newer car and uh, they're just so refined and uh, you would never expect it to sound the way it does. And they're just in, I mean, it's a six liter 
rear wheel drive four door sedan that's longer than the SS, but they will get up and go. My wife has an ignition orange Pontiac G8 GT. It's a 2008. You naturally graduate from that car to the SS. And they came out with a sunburst metallic orange 2017 Chevy SS with the four options, sunroof color, manual or in a spare or automatic in a spare. And so she went to a local Chevy dealership when Chevrolet ran a 20% off sale to get rid of this car. And we just couldn't believe that your sticker on it and out the door was 44, 40 some odd thousand dollars and you can pick it up for like 37, 38 new warrantied out and ready to go. We called a local Chevy dealership, a smaller place, uh, Tom Civet Chevrolet, like in Greensburg, Indiana, you have more cars in your garage than they have on their lot. And we went to go buy what they said was a 2017 Chevy SS on their lot. It wasn't there yet, but they got us there. And she did order it and she bought it straight and uh, left the dealership without her new car because it hadn't arrived yet. So uh, when it did, she got it brand new uh, on a 20% off sale and it's about time for her to drive it. She's had it for uh, three years and it hasn't made it to its first oil change yet because she drives a G8 all the time and I drive my Ute all the time. It's so weird when you graduate because you're like, man, this thing's awesome. Then you get in this thing and it's like, oh man. And all the same rowdy ass modifications that you can do to the G8, you can do to the SS. And you have a six liter in the G8 and a six two in the SS, whatever, but you can still exhaust and everything. It's got a bimodal exhaust on it and everything. The cars are, are unloved by the manufacturer, but they're loved by the people who own them. And it was, uh, it was a bad move for General Motors not to support that vehicle but um, they already had so much competition in their own lineup from the Malibu to the Impala. So why put another four door involved here? Granted, those two are front wheel drive and were rear wheel drive with 435 horsepower out of the box. So every year, it's usually at the end of March, or beginning of April, they have the extravaganza, which used to be the G8 extravaganza. And now the other cars have graduated into the classes and we have SS's and Commodores and Utes and Caprices and they take over the South Georgia Motorsports Park for a weekend, and everything from autocross to drag racing to, there's a video of me out there doing a big smoky blue burnout with, because it's Australian car, so I had some blue burnout tires shipped over from Australia, and once I was done doing it, everybody thought Haley and I were pregnant. It's not a boy, we're not pregnant. So now, all the people that don't want to drive down there, I live on four acres and we have a barbecue every year and it's the, uh, it's June 6th or it's usually the first week of June, weekend of June. And last year there was 104 Holdens in my backyard. Matter of fact, the lady across the street sold her house on the same weekend that I had my cookout with all the Holdens. And of course everybody leaves my house like John Force. They got to, right? And uh, the people that now live there looked at the house the day that we had our cookout and they're like, does that happen all the time? So uh, I almost unsealed that deal, but uh, I let them know that it was a once a year event. If you love VinWiki, you'll have heard us talk about minimizing ownership cost on exotic cars. But the guys at Exotic Car Hacks have developed a system, an educational resource that you can access now using exoticcarhacks.com slash VinWiki and get the best membership rates that they've offered since Black Friday. It shows you how to leverage financing, minimize what you pay, maximize how you sell it, and minimize the cost while you've got it. So be sure to join their community of owners and enthusiasts today at exoticcarhacks.com slash VinWiki and it'll be easier than ever to buy, own, and sell, and love the car of your dreams.